Welcome everyone to the Season 4 Mythic Plus tier list. You know, we were worried that Season 4's meta would just end up being a carbon copy of Season 3, but man, that has not been the case. Season 4 has thrown us quite a few curveballs, and we're excited to find out what other surprises Season 4's meta might have in store for us all. To produce this list, we trawled logs, watched hours of streams, and as always, collaborated with the best in the business. It's these same players from Echo and Method who worked with us to produce hundreds of videos exclusive to SkillCap.com. Stay tuned to learn more, but for now, let's get into the tier list. We won't spend a ton of time on Vengeance, because you've heard this song enough times. Vengeance has quite literally defined the tank meta since Season 3. Every tank lives under the shadow of Vengeance. Roots are built around them, and other tanks are expected to replicate it or die trying. Above plus 15 keys, all other tanks might as well be a rounding error. The recent nerfs to Vengeance reign in its control quite a bit, but not enough to give any other spec a real chance to compete with it. And when you consider the potency of Chaos Brand, it's really hard to see Vengeance going anywhere. Few tanks have ever been as S-tier as Vengeance currently is. So, for the rest of you, it might be time to consider joining the dark side, and we have you covered with our Vengeance Fundamental course over at SkillCap.com. So, uh, we could just kinda do this and move on to the DPS, but just for fun, let's try and pretend that a tank meta actually exists and keep going. When it comes to simply pressing buttons, Blood Death Knights may be the most fun of any tank. Blood saw a lot of success in Dragonflight's raids, featuring in the world-first kills of both Mythic Razageth and Farak. In Dungeons, it's not quite as cutting-edge. Its lack of control is a serious problem. Gorefiend's Grasp is one of Blood's most iconic abilities, but it's too expensive for most players to run. Blinding Sleet is incredibly mid, so besides Death Grip, Blood DKs are at the mercy of their teammates when it comes to add control but their damage is honestly pretty good. And like Guardian Druids, your team can hypothetically pick up the slack. But Blood DKs are creeping up the leaderboard, so we see them as serviceable B-tier tank. We predicted that Guardian Druids would be a niche presence in Season 4, but ultimately established themselves as the clear second place behind Vengeance Demon Hunter. And I mean, technically that's happened, but it's literally just Squish Vegan. It's one guy single-handedly keeping the Guardian dream alive. Guardian Druids are honestly really boring to talk about because they're your classic meat shield. They're a tank with high survivability and low damage. Their control isn't great, but it's not even bad enough to be interesting. Guardian, if played with a coordinated group, can rival Vengeance, and in Season 4, A tier stands for almost as good as Vengeance, so there you go. But can we really say that Guardian is the second best tank based off the performance of one guy? Everyone knows tier lists need to be objective and data-driven, so let's pull back up the chart of tank representation at level 15 and above. And would you look at that, Protection Paladin emerges as the clear winner in the race to rival Vengeance. In all seriousness, Protection Paladin is hard to make sense of. They're fragile, but less so than Brewmaster, their control is above average but dramatically less than Vengeance, and both these factors combine to give them the lowest damage of any tank. So on paper, Protection Paladin shouldn't be relevant, but the data doesn't lie. Paladins are succeeding at the highest level, all 12 of them. So screw it, A tier. We weren't sure what we wanted to do with Brewmaster. It's the least popular spec by far, and the spec is basically a glass cannon. Brewmaster sucks at doing tank stuff right now, but its damage was high enough that it didn't feel right to call it bad. Equinox wasn't playing a tank, he was playing Brewmaster. He and his fellow monks were underdogs, and how can you hate that? Well, apparently Blizzard found a way. In one of the strangest tuning changes in recent memory, Blizzard nerfed the least played tank in the game. Seeing that, it's not hard to put them in the C tier. To finish up, we have Protection Warrior. Prior to the most recent buffs to Prot, the spec was just mid. No low lights to speak of, but the highlight reel was blank as well. With the significant buffs they've received, it looks like Prot is going to ascend to pretty good. Its control is respectable, its damage is average, and Battle Shout can be really nice for melee comps that don't have a DPS warrior. But would we want a Prot warrior more than a Blood DK? We might regret this, but we're going to say no. We're putting Protection Warrior alongside Blood DK in the B tier. Now let's move into the melee DPS, and we begin with Frost and Unholy Death Knights. Don't worry, we won't be here for long. Death Knights have very little utility to get excited about. AMZ is cool if your guy presses it, which he probably won't, and besides that, the only thing the DK offers is Blinding Sleet and a couple of Death Grips. In the absence of any exciting tech, DKs are damage bots that need to earn their way into keys purely through the damage meter. Frost DKs are the best they've been in a while, but their damage still isn't enough to kick in the door and demand that we pay attention. We're putting it in the high C tier. 
We still don't love Unholy, but it's undeniably better than Frost. We're going to put it in the B tier, but in our hearts, it's C tier. Havoc Demon Hunters were having the time of their lives a few months ago, but the steady rise of Vengeance has seen Havoc's stocks plummet. Combine that with some nerfs and the spec is decidedly mid. Havoc ends up having a lot in common with Unholy, and if we're willing to let Unholy into the B tier, then it's only fair we let Havoc in as well. Feral Druid is a bit of an enigma. Once again, all signs point to them simply being a worse version of Moonkin. But Feral mains might just be the most fanatical of any spec, they just won't give it up. So there's a handful of parses that hint at Feral having some juice in it, but we're only seeing glimpses right now. We'd love to do a whole video just investigating what's up with Feral Druids. Let us know if that interests you. For now, we're nervously putting Feral in the C tier. Survival is the first spec on this list that's so underrepresented that it becomes hard to properly evaluate. This is because survival suffers from the but why problem. You could play survival, but why? This season dramatically favors ranged DPS, and playing survival means denying yourself the ability to play with the Razageth bow, which is way stronger than the pole arms available to survival. On paper, this could be a decent season for survival, but there's not much evidence of them really tearing it up. And the most likely explanation is that the spec just isn't that good. We're putting survival in the C tier. We've taken multiple tangents in our recent videos to hype up Windwalker, but now that it's time for the tier list, what do we think of it? Even now, we're still umming and erring on it. Several Windwalkers are making the spec look really good, good enough for the A tier, but across the board, we can't really say that Windwalker has earned that privilege yet. So, B tier it is. Retribution is the first spec on this list where the keystone level really begins to play a factor. In high keys, Ret Paladins are good. In low keys, Ret Paladins are the best DPS in the game. They are made for obliterating trash mobs while the Fire Mage is still ramping. Combine that stellar damage profile with all their utility that we're always talking about, and Retribution is easily our pick for the best melee in Season 4. A lot of Retribution's success comes down to the Farak Legendary. We can't remember a time when Retribution was this good, and it may be a while before they're ever this good again. If you want to dominate with Retribution, now is the time to check out our Retribution course. We're putting it in the A tier because in Season 4, the best a melee spec can hope to achieve is A tier. Next up, we have Assassination, who in Season 4 continues to be pretty mediocre. Hi, sorry to butt in, but I want to do Assassination. Assass is the least popular spec in the game right now. There are half as many Assassination Rogues as there are Survival Hunters. So, what's going on? Let's list every vaguely positive attribute we can think of for Assassination. We have 6 second growth silence, and that's it. Assassination sucks to play and sucks to play with. They are more dependent on restealthing than even sub, which means that they hate when you go fast in the game mode and tenant dev you go fast. They hate when pulls are too long, they hate when pulls are too short. If Goldilocks was an asshole, she would play Assassination. You know, survival probably isn't good, but you can see the framework, you can see the vision. Feral Druids likewise probably aren't good, but Feral mains refuse to accept it. They turn up every season and try to make it work. Both those specs try. Assassination... Assassination doesn't. It doesn't want to be here. And, and no patch can fix that. It is D tier in the worst way possible. So, you know, if Assass doesn't want to be here, let's, let's grant its wish. Wow, that was a bit much. But don't despair, Rogue mains, because if any spec loves Keystones, it's Outlaw Rogue. Outlaw is not going to be the juggernaut that it was last season, but it is an exceptional DPS. Outlaw's survivability is great, its utility is great, and its damage profile is among the most versatile in the game. Single target, two target, five target, Outlaw, always happy, always blasting. The target cap only comes into effect above 8 mobs, and we've had a tendency to exaggerate the significance of those 9 plus pulls. These pulls are memorable, but they represent a fraction of the overall dungeon. Outlaw is an A tier DPS, and a favorite for any pug run. Outlaw is a fast and chaotic spec with one of the highest skill caps in the game. If you want to play Outlaw to your full potential, check out our courses over on skillcap.com. Sub Rogues are an odd one to talk about. Sub is hiding its power level at the moment. It's a burst-oriented spec that needs you to pull around its cooldowns. The spec is great when people cater to it, but the simple fact is that no one is bothering to make Sub work. Outlaw is good enough and versatile enough that Sub has been relegated to a sideshow. So while it wouldn't shock us to see Sub come out of nowhere and Shadow Strike the meta, for now, we have them lurking in the C tier. 
Next up, Enhanced Shaman. Enhanced stocks have plummeted in the last few months. We've covered why several times. Their single target damage is their strength, but it's fallen to the middle of the pack in Season 4. Combine that with their target cap of 5 mobs, and their overall damage is among some of the lowest in the game. There's also an argument that they are the most squishy of any DPS spec. We're placing Enhanced in the C tier, but we consider it among the best of this bunch. Let's conclude the melee section by covering Arms and Fury. Warriors are often criticized for not bringing enough utility, but compared to Death Knights, they're stacked. Battle Shout will be a must-have for any melee comp since, let's be real, you aren't playing with a prot warrior. Defensively, they're insane, and a few of them even bother to run Shockwave. Arms is perhaps the best spec in the game at 2 target cleave, which has a lot of value this season. Arms also has a relatively flat damage profile, which is great in pug runs. We're putting Arms in the B tier. At the time of writing, Fury appears to be a distant second to arms, but there are reasons for this. Fury warriors obviously dual wield. That means that they have an entirely new weapon to pick up and upgrade, which is an enormous investment. Unless your name is Noxiv, who pulled off one of the great god rolls with their vault and picked up this Ashkander. And with this Biss weapon in hand, you'll never guess which Fury warrior has been mogging every arms warrior on the ladder. So we like Fury and feel it's ultimately comparable to arms, especially with the recent buffs. But in recognition of Fury's target cap and the opportunity cost of the second weapon, we're giving the edge to arms. Now onto the range DPS. We've been saying for weeks now, this season 4 is going to be a caster meta. There's a reason why the top of the list feels so empty right now. If you have a lifelong melee DPS who's looking to push in season 4, it might be time to see how the other half lives. And our global range DPS course is exactly what you need to make that leap, no matter which of these range DPS you settle on. But back to the tier list, I promised you that I was about to start handing out S ranks. But not quite yet, because we have to talk about balanced druids first. Moonkins are famously treacherous creatures. If you believe them, then you'll believe they are in perpetual strife. Constantly the worst DPS in the game. Most recently, Moonkins were upset about their Season 4 tier set underperforming, to the point that it was a DPS loss to use it. Quite a few specs are dealing with this issue, but it's telling that the only tier set to be buffed was Moonkin. But even through this period, the data aggregators were claiming that Balanced Druid was really good because Moonkins have been engaging in fraud. When a Resto Druid begins a run as Balanced, it goes on the books as a Balanced Druid's key. This has caused a lot of the highest keys of the season to be misattributed to Balance, inflating their performance in the eyes of the algorithm. To put it simply, Moonkins have been stealing the valor of our hard-working healers. Is there no low they won't steep to? When you account for that inflation, it becomes clear that the Moonkins were telling the truth. They did kinda suck. In all seriousness, it's a net good for the meta to have balanced druids around. Moonkins allow for another source of Mark of the Wild, and that will provide a lot of diversity to healers above that plus 10 weekly bracket. Now that their tier set buffs are in, Moonkins are right on the borderline between our A and B tier. We could go either way, but as a gesture, we'll let them sneak into the A tier. We're going to break from the format and start our discussion of AUG by putting them in the S tier. We're doing this just to get that out of the way, because that S tier ranking is misleading. As we've been saying for months, AUG is a spec that's valued because of the survivability that it brings to the group. But even then, the big appeal is specifically buffing the healer's throughput. AUG is valued differently in certain dungeons. Thanner would play Augment in Azure Vault, but wouldn't play it in Brackenhide Hollow. All of this to say that Augmentation is a specific tool for solving specific problems. And those problems don't really exist in the plus 10 range. When it comes to just filling out our vault, we'd honestly shy away from Augment. We'd rather play with a Dev Evoker. Devastation is in a really good state in Season 4. Dev can either do some of the highest single target damage in the game, or above average AoE. Its weakness is that it doesn't have an in-between. It has no real two-target cleave no means of funneling damage, and so on. This means that Devastation can't really be considered an S-tier spec, but it's great in specific dungeons, and absolutely a spec that every AUG Evoker should have in their arsenal. For that reason, we're putting it in the A-tier. Next up, Beast Mastery and Marksmanship. These are great examples of specs that live and die on the damage meter. Thankfully, Beast Mastery is in a solid spot in that department. Their AoE machines and the Razageth bow has given their single target damage a meaningful boost. Their mobility is a huge asset, and they have that flat damage profile that helps them go with the flow. Beast Mastery is among the most popular DPS specs, and we're cool with that because BM is a vibe spec. It probably will struggle to break into truly high keys, but they're another spec that feels purpose-built for plus 10 weeklies. So we're putting them in the B tier. 
Marksmanship is an incredibly niche pick when compared to Beast Mastery. MM could be considered a worse version of Arcane Mage. Marks is a very cooldown dependent spec that can compete with BM when the group caters to MM's cooldowns. For the high-end hunters, there may be some dungeons where Marks is given preference over BM, but we view that application as too niche to give them any higher than a C tier. And if that's unfair, then let God strike us down. This still on? Cool. Would you believe that mages are good this season? Shocking, I know. Arcane mages are in the same boat as Sub Rogue. They're a cooldown dependent bursty spec that can be really good when players bother to put in the work. If Arcane was the only mage spec, people would be playing it and it'd probably be S tier, but Arcane isn't the only mage spec. As it stands, it probably caps out at A tier, but given how much better the other two specs are, I'm sorry, Arcane needs to go in the B tier. As we've talked about before, Fire is in an odd position in Season 4. It's difficult to play well, feels bad, and does tank or even healer level damage under certain circumstances. But if the pulls go on for long enough, Fire will continue to ramp and end up as one of the highest DPS in the game. It is an S tier spec, but we would recommend you avoid Fire in low keys. You will do zero damage. Instead, we'd recommend Frost. Frost is legit in Season 4. Its overall damage is comparable to Fire, so the pros have been swapping between Fire and Frost based on what damage profiles they need. Frost has always been associated with AoE from Blizzard and Frozen Orb, but their big ticket ability right now is actually Glacial Spike. Frost has excellent priority damage, relatively short ramp up, excellent funnel, and solid two target cleave. Frost has a versatility that makes it the preferred spec for a mage who's looking for one spec to pick and stick. Frost is going in the S tier right next to Fire. We've said it before and we'll say it again, Shadow is the ultimate DPS in Mythic Plus right now. Whether it's their utility, their defensives, their AoE damage, or their single target damage, everything Shadow does is top of its class. Our Shadow Priest course is one of our favorites because there's just so much depth to Shadow's design and so many tools to master. Shadow going in the S tier is the easiest decision of the entire video. Now onto Elemental. We've been extremely dismissive of Elemental up to now, but man, Ellie has silenced the haters in Season 4. Elemental's AoE playstyle has evolved dramatically in Dragonflight. The days of spamming Chain Lightning and Earthquake are long gone. Ellie's AoE damage isn't jaw-dropping, but it's easily a passing grade. Meanwhile, Ellie's single target is genuinely impressive, especially for funneling into priority single target. And we're always hyping up Shaman's control. While their squishiness remains a weakness, it's clearly a solvable problem. Elemental is a tier below these truly meta casters. You know where that puts them? In our A tier. Affliction has been in the Mythic Plus doghouse for years. It was the only Mythic Plus spec with absolutely no representation in the top 0.1% of the leaderboard in Season 3. Despite that, Stove insists that he specifically could make Affliction work. And he told us that before Affliction received these modest buffs. So we don't see any incentive to play Affliction over Destro, unless you just like Affliction. If that's you, then these buffs allow you to at least turn up to keys without wanting to wear a paper bag over your head. Affliction goes in our C tier. Next, we have Destruction, which is as far removed from Affliction as you can imagine. Destruction's AoE damage, as we keep saying, is likely the highest of any spec in the game. They also love two-target cleave. Destro's single target was, in theory, its weakness, but Season 4 boss fights provide tons of funnel to boost Destro's single target. Combine that with some single target buffs to Destro that we think were probably unnecessary, and Destro is the damage bot in Season 4. It's so good that it's easy to forget about how good Singe magic can be. Man, Destro is good right now, easily S tier. This makes life difficult for Demonology. Demo has some of the highest single target in the game, but single target specialists aren't sexy in Season 4. With the recent buffs to Destro's single target damage, Demonology really struggles to justify itself. When you opt to play Demonology, you're giving up Singe Magic, which is a huge L to be taking this season. In short, there's nothing wrong with Demonology, but it is constantly hounded with this question of, but why? For that reason, we can't put it any higher than B tier. Finally, we have the healers. Resto Druid are the obvious standouts among the healers. They are the most popular healer overall by a decent margin, but that decent margin turns into dominance in high keys. The appeal of Resto Druid isn't complex. They're a versatile healer that can get the job done while bringing boring but essential stuff like Mark of the Wild. Resto Druid is our pick for the S tier. But as we've said before, you should not walk away from this video thinking I can only play Resto Druid. Resto Druids aren't a healer who can get by on vibes. They need to anticipate damage and respond accordingly. 
they wouldn't be our first choice for plus 10 weeklies simply because we're too lazy. Preservation is the least popular healer at the moment. You may never have even seen one. There are quite a few reasons for that, but none of them have to do with Preservation's performance. Preservation is a remarkably strong healer in Season 4. While there aren't a ton of examples, players like Eyelash have demonstrated proof of concept. We're expecting to see Augment Evokers grow less popular as the season progresses, and with the recent buffs to Moonkin, a comp like this starts to look really good. While they may remain a rare sight, Feyner remains steadfast that preservation is going to be turning up in high keys as the season progresses. We believe they have the potential to rival Resto Druids. For the time being, we're confident to put them in the A tier. Mistweaver was the surprise hit of Season 3, and while the spec has received several nerfs since then, there's still a lot to love. The spec's fist-weaving build is perfectly tailored to modern dungeons, with a suite of potent throughput cooldowns, multiple AoE stops, and a kick. Fist weaving can be difficult to wrap your head around at first, but it's a ton of fun and extremely effective. It's our recommendation for any player looking to pick up a healing spec, and our Mistweaver Fundamentals course has everything you need to get off on the best possible foot. Mistweaver goes in the A tier. Holy Paladin's modern playstyle is beloved by many healers, but the spec was so successful in Season 2 that Blizzard broke the spec's back. As a result, Holy's healing throughput ranks as the lowest of any spec, and despite being a spec themed around bashing the enemy with a hammer, Holy's damage output is also bottom tier. But while a few stalwart defenders of the light have stuck with Holy and are making it work, it's criminal to see such a great spec languishing like this. So we are putting Holy Paladin in the D tier as an act of love. Hopefully Blizzard will get the message and improve Holy Paladins going forward. With the release of the Season 4 patch, Holy Priests received a modest rework. It featured a lot of quality of life improvements, but most notably gave Holy Priests an insane damage buff. On the meters, Holy Priests now put out by far the most damage of any healer. It has become the ultimate vibe spec. Healing is simple, and when no healing needs doing, you can pump out big damage. This has led to Holy Priest narrowly claiming the title of second most popular healer. This has all been bad news for Discipline, who has been a victim of circumstance. Its representation is under attack from both Shadow and Holy, causing its popularity to plummet between seasons. For what it's worth, we remain of the opinion that Discipline is the better spec for serious keys. DR effects remain useful in high keys, and the flaw with Holy Priest's damage is that Holy is either healing or doing damage. As things get more intense, Holy's damage begins to drop, while Disc needs to blast damage to heal regardless. This causes Disc to outdamage Holy as the key level increases. So what do we make of this? Well, we're going to put both Disc and Holy in the B tier, because Shadow's popularity hurts them quite a bit. Although we think Disc is the better spec at the very top end, Holy is the better spec for most players most of the time, so we're giving it the slight edge on the tier list. To finish off, we have Resto Shaman. We were hopeful of how they do in Season 4, but their healing throughput is average while their damage output is below average. We're going to put it in the C tier. But while Resto Shaman don't have a lot to be excited about right now, we do want to acknowledge that the spec remains very playable for the vast majority of keys. But that's all we have for you. If you enjoyed what you saw here and want to see more from us, hit that subscribe button. And if you check out skillcap.com using the link in the description, you'll get an exclusive discount. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.